So I had told myself I was done covering Anthem until, I don't know, mid to late March, or whenever we get player base numbers to reference, and I could harken back to this tweet and be like, haha, I told you so. But it's just too juicy. Like, I wouldn't make videos about the game if it would just quietly improve, or if it had even semi-passable framework which players could get behind and point to as a defense. Well, Bioware and Anthem are not just putting their head down and trucking forward, and the game isn't in a passable enough state where they can afford additional negative PR. It seems like Anthem and Bioware might be taking a page out of the Fallout 76 book and going full fuck-up speed ahead. I never specifically covered it, but Fallout 76 recently banned a 900-hour some-odd player for supposedly having too much loot. I never sunk my teeth into that story, I didn't research it, so I'm just going off of headlines, take that for what you will, but in that same sort of let's ban players and cause a shitstorm type mindset, Bioware has now executed their own hold my beer maneuver. Before getting into the latest thing, let's fill out some context. Anthem was in development for six years and puffed up as the next coming of Christ by fans all the way up through multiple demos, which were not really demos, but whatever, all the way to release, staggered release by the way, where the fans still defended the game pretending that it would all be better after the day one patch. Well, the day one patch comes and goes, and the game fixes some things, doesn't fix others, but all the while, new issues are popping up left, right, and center. I'll mostly throw aside all the things I have already talked about and focus on things that are somewhat newer. For instance, now that players have really immersed themselves in the end game, it's a balancing nightmare. Gear can roll irrelevant stats that have no effect, a portion of the masterwork items just don't work, and there have already been multiple instances of mistaken patch iterations where the loot system broke, was fixed, rebroke, and more. The largest issue is loot rewards as a function of difficulty scaling. Now, a while ago, there was this little snippet right here released which expressed a difficulty damage scaling tactic of increasing health and damage of Grandmaster 3 enemies by up to 3,100%. That's 31 times as much health and damage. Well, I criticized that heavily at the time because that's lazy trash. There is no possible complement to level towards six different difficulty tiers that are only a modification of health and damage when all the end game that exists is essentially three different strongholds. After after six years, but it gets even better. Closer to launch day, there was a gaggle of fanboys. Pre what? Is it a gaggle? It's a gaggle of something. It's not a gaggle of crows. That's a different word. I think a gaggle. That's a, a gaggle of fanboys parading through my live stream and spouting off about how 3,100% health and damage was misinformation. They love that word. It doesn't mean what the actual definition is to them, though. To them, it's synonymous with, I don't like what you just said, uh, misinformation. They claimed it was actually only 900%, but still, now having slogged through a few more weeks, it is very, very obvious that the health and damage scaling is somewhere in the vicinity of 3,100% to 3,300%. And I have not been able to find the exact specifics, but but the enemies on higher difficulties exponentially increase their health to the point where it can take several minutes to take down even the weakest enemy units. Still though, this might not be a problem if the rewards were proportional, but they aren't. It has now become common knowledge that farming Grandmaster 1 is the single best tier to use because it avoids the ludicrous scaling and also gives the exact same rewards at a fraction of the time invested. Grandmaster 1 quite literally is more lucrative to farm than anything else. Significantly so, I might add, after talking with a number of Anthem players who have diligently been grinding the endgame. It's more lucrative than either of the higher two difficulties. So not only has Anthem got anemic endgame, but a third of their entire difficulty curve system is pointless. Now on to the real meat and bones of this video though, which is Bioware banning players for exploitation. The specific instance I will address today is a creator named Glad, but in situations like this, where we hear about a notable streamer or creator who's issued a ban such as this, it is nearly certain that the issue is far more widespread. Many more players were banned, and this was not just a single player targeted exclusively by Bioware, this is just the one source we actually end up hearing from. So what Glad had done was utilize what Bioware is now classifying as an economy exploit. The gist of it is he was farming a route of chests in the open world that were more lucrative than other activities leading him to acquire more gear at a faster rate per hour than anything else he could complete. Right off the bat, this should raise some eyebrows because he was just opening chests in the open world and getting the rewards that those chests gave. He was not hacking or glitching through walls or something like that, or breaking the game for those rewards, really. He was just playing. He did discuss a damage exploit that he used on Titans and was able to kill them quickly, but Titans don't even drop gear. And honestly, if you want a more complete view of the entire situation, go watch his video. I'll link it in the description down below. 
Regardless, that's what you do in these games. You find gear to find more gear, and you use whatever method you enjoy the most or can net you the best rewards the fastest, so this is in no way, shape, or form uncommon, and it is being utilized by tons of players. It's all over Reddit, trust me. Well, Bioware didn't like that, and issued him an actual full-on ban from the game for exploitation of the economy. Let's dissect this. Exploitation of the economy. What economy? There is no player trade. He is not netting a profit from this farming method. A farming method accessible to all players, by the way. There is no PvP either, so he is not getting an unfair advantage over anyone else. None at all. The game is entirely cooperative, and as a result, him having more gear and a stronger relative javelin power level actually helps the teammates that he does have or gets match made with. There is no way to classify farming open world chests that just happen to have a higher drop rate than Bioware wanted as exploitation of the economy in such a way as to warrant a permanent ban. Bioware's tactic right now is the exact wrong move. In a saturated market that is largely not receptive of their unfinished product, they target and ban a creator that was still enduring their game, promoting it to his audience, and benefiting them overall. They ban him for playing the game and receiving loot that they programmed in, through chests that they accidentally overvalued. That's like me posting a video by mistake and then banning people that simply watched it because they watched it. The video that I posted by mistake and then banning them for what? You see what I'm saying? Bioware can't afford to be banning what little support they even have. It's too premature for me to make the I told you so video about a 90% player base drop within four weeks, but I firmly believe that's already nearly upon us. But even with a tiny snippet of sales data from the UK specifically, we can still see the bleak situation Anthem is in. Now, the UK sales figures that have been circulating are indeed physical only, and in an increasingly digital world, it warrants a mention that the figures are likely not quite as exaggerated. But a preliminary report showed that Anthem had sold half as many physical copies in the UK as Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda being a game that was quickly terminated by EA for lack of success, very pointedly. And the game sold one-tenth, one-tenth as many physical copies as the original Destiny. Now, yes, the colossal gap between these two numbers is likely a bit more compressed since the uptick in online downloads, but even with a significant and beneficial readjustment to that data, Anthem is still a whopping failure. Already. Especially for a game that took six years, was hyped up beyond any realistic moderation, and somehow still retains a veritable hive-minded collective of raging fans intent on suppressing any and all criticism of the game. There is a very short list of games and developers that have banned players over similarly trivial activities, or used such broken fundamental development like a crutch as badly as Anthem has. The game truly likens itself already to Fallout 76, and when hearkening back to how EA ghosted Mass Effect Andromeda almost immediately after release, and now knowing that Anthem, in our small statistical sample size at least, is performing far worse than Andromeda did, I sincerely ask you, all of you who are watching this, where you think the 10-year plan is actually headed. If it were to end up working out and in six years we can all look back, have a laugh, have a glass of scotch or a cigar and say, wow, what a game. I'm sure glad Upper Echelon was wrong. What a prick that guy is. Well, jolly good on that front, but what's more likely here? Really, be honest. To the fans of Anthem somehow soldiering on despite the fact that half the gear simply does not work, the network errors are still in full swing, the difficulty is just insane health and damage scaling, the last two and frankly the apex tiers of difficulty in the whole game that were supposed to be what we grind for and strive to reach are literally useless and Bioware is now banning players that simply played their broken game because they opened the broken chests in the broken game that Bioware made themselves to the silent fans persisting through all of that. You are a hero, a truly unsung, patient, and forgiving person. Now though, to all the fans out there campaigning to silence anyone who says, wait, this game has too much wrong with it, this is unacceptable. The fans justifying broken release day products by saying gamers are too entitled. After a $60 game was released in a broken and dysfunctional state that is well outside the parameters of reasonable forgiveness. To the fans constantly citing tired old phrases like, if you don't like it, don't say anything, and no one is forcing you to play it, so just shut up. If you are one of those. Well, I'll speak slow and right into the mic on this one, even though that will likely demonetize me. Go fuck yourself. You are a contributing factor behind the detrimental slide of the games industry. You, 
are a problem. The justification of unfinished and broken products, immoral bans directed at players who simply play the game with a meta-geared mentality, lazy design, reused assets, and worthless difficulty tiers on top of fully-fledged microtransactions in a full-priced $60 game. Justifying all that, however you pretend to do so, is idiotic and it's damaging. Anthem was never going to be anything but a controversy. The fandom hyped this game into oblivion, and even I myself fell prey when I heard about how they had sacked up and offered a demo, but I learned my lesson on that one. That was an oopsie and a half. It was a marketing ploy and a front, a sidestepping tactic as they pushed out a product that was clearly untested. Any halfway coherent MMO player or looter shooter fan who played this game would have found 50 things in the first 10 hours that needed to be changed. And yet, after 6 years, it launches in this state. No one played this game pre-release. No one tested the weapons or the stat rolls, the difficulty tiers, and the loot farming. No one checked to see if this thing even worked. They just shoved it out the door, and now they are banning players who are discovering that it, surprise, surprise, doesn't work. Anyway, that's enough for today. It's already been more of a rant than I intended, but I can remember as far back as 2017 when the wretched fanboys were already marshalling their forces and overhyping this game, and even then it was irritating. And now, in the face of what will likely persist for many more weeks and possibly months in a state of perpetual swirling controversy, seeing Anthem exist in such a state and still get defended, it grinds my gears, man. But yeah, that's it. If you want to support the channel, we have wonderful merch so you can tell the world that you are rude, like me. And some other stuff too, like a Facebook group, Discord server, gaming forums, and more. But that's it. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.